Welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy X. Oh, gotten into a pickle, haven't they? Get me out of here! I want out now! You hear me? You waste your breath. Man, I hope Yuna's okay. Hmm. She's strong. She'll make it. She'll make it? What, so she can die? <sighs> Why is it... Everything in Spira seems to revolve around people dying? Ah, uh, the spiral of death. Huh? Summoners challenge the bringer of death, sin, and die doing so. Guardians give their lives to protect their summoner. The Faith are the souls of the dead. Even the Maesters of Yevon are unsent. Spira is full of death. Only sin is reborn, and then only to bring more death. It is a cycle of death, spiraling endlessly. <sighs> Come out. Your sentence has been decided. Sentence? Don't you mean execution? <laughs> really, now? What person would execute a dear friend? You would. Looks like you're next. Uh, next for what? Ah! Get going. Where's everybody else? Floating down there somewhere, maybe? Oh, things just keep getting worse, don't they? What's our sentence? Think they expect us to give up and die down here. Oh, well that's a lame way to kill someone. Where's Uni? I don't know. Wonder if we should wait for her. Hmm. Let's wait at the exit. If there is an exit. How fares the Ranso Maester? It seems my father's murder troubles him. <laughs> Ever the Ranso. Hard-headed, hardly useful. However, the Summoner Yuna, daughter to High Summoner Brasco, she may be of some use to us alive. She has disturbed the order of Yevin. She cannot be allowed to live. I understand. Let it go, Seymour. No one thrown into the Via Purifico has ever survived. Yet there is always a small chance that they might. Place guards at the exit kill any who emerge. Sir. Leave that to me. Oh. First your father, now your bride. Allow me to do this because she is my bride. Wait, I will go too. You do not trust me? Would you trust a man who murdered his father? Very well, as you wish.
Lady Yuna, forgive me. Well, things haven't exactly turned out for the best, have they? Everybody's been captured. Including Yuna. She may have gotten her Aeon, but it got her captured. And everybody's been thrown into either this labyrinth or the underwater one where Tita, Titus is. So we gotta go and find the other characters. And we're gonna be playing as Yuna all alone for the first and maybe only time in the game. And this is gonna be a little weird because she is solo right now. And, well, if you've been playing the game up to now, you'll realize that Yuna is not exactly the best fighter of the group. Her physical attacks are pathetic and she has no magical attacks, so we have to rely completely on her ability to cast Aeons. So let's pull our new one out, Bahamu. Ooh. This is a very powerful Aeon here. I think this is actually one that's capable of breaking the damage barrier. Even, meaning that uh, the damage barrier in Final Fantasy X is 9,999, the five-digit mark. And none of your characters or Aeons can do more damage than that in one, in one single attack. But if it's something that can break the damage barrier, you can do that. You can go over that attack. I think Bahamu can actually do that right from the start. Not that we can actually achieve that because level isn't high enough. Okay, time to kill this little thing. Bahamut has the ability to fire off magic attacks, so go ahead. So I used fire on something I should have been using thunder on. survives. Now the other party members are in this dungeon. At least a few of them are, so it's best that you go and find them as quickly as possible to give Yuna some support. But here we have a situation, the whole political situation that's happening with the Church of Yevon. It's getting out of hand. It seems as though everybody but the Ronso was aware of what Seymour was doing, the fact that Seymour killed his own father. I had put forward the idea several episodes ago that this was just sort of a Guado thing, Guado looking to gain more power in the church, because they were relative newcomers to the thing. So it seemed like what they wanted to do was go and kill off Lord Jiskel to install Lord Seymour in as the maester and uh, position of power. And Seymour would be more willing to push for Guado interests. Turns out that's not really the case, because everybody seems to be corrupt at the top of Yevon. We have that everybody but that Ronso seems to have some sort of issue, and Maester Micah, the like head maester, the head in charge, high dude, is actually a corpse. Please help us. So this is going way against the teachings of Yevon, you know, they're saying you always have to send the corpses and the uh, fireflies and souls or whatever of anybody who's dead. But not only is Seymour dead and unsent, but Maester Micah is. So this thing goes far beyond just the Guado. This is a problem stretching all the way back to the start of this whole Yevon thing. It's not just that. They also seem to be under the belief that Sin cannot be stopped. So regardless of what they do, maybe it's something to do with them why they have machines in their temples and using guns and robots and all that kind of thing. Ooh, it's Orin. There must be an exit somewhere. We search. They used robots because it seems as though they have finally given up on the concept of atonement for their sins, so there's no point anymore, we can't do it, we might as well use the machines. But they're not telling everybody else that, because if they were going to tell everybody else that, you can freely go and ignore the 
kingdoms of Yemen, they would lose their power, and they're all a bunch of power-hungry bastards. Mess up. We got Orin in a fight in a couple of fights. Monsters to fight, but let's go flood an Aeon to take care of these things. Because neither of these two characters are really capable of attacking something with the kind of agility that these flying eyeballs have. It's a little, it's a little bit more strife inside of Yavin as well, because we have Maester Seymour, who obviously the youngest of the group, seems to have a bit of an issue with the fact that they want to go and kill Yuna. He wanted Yuna for some reason. Maybe he's in love with her. Who the hell knows? But Keenock, that bald old dude that knows her, he's like, oh no, we got to do this, and I don't trust you, and all that kind of things. So maybe there's a a little bit of a hint of uh, dissonance inside the Church of Yevon. One more character we gotta find. Or actually, two more characters. Here's Lulu. Lulu. I... It's okay, I know. Okay, now we have three characters and we make up a pretty good fighting force, but there's one more character hidden down here, and that would be Kimari. There's also a couple of treasure chests we can go pick up. I'm not going to go and grab every single thing down here, only because I actually forgot to while I was playing the game. So we're just going to pick up Kimari and get our asses out of here. Ah, here he is. Yuna, sorry we left you alone. No. It's okay. Now let's get out of here. Head over to the north side. I can actually see the uh, red beacon at the top. That'll direct you where you need to go. Not that I really needed to tell anyone that, I think. If you were to head down here and open up some of these doors, there's a couple more treasure chests you can get. I'm not going to do that. Lady Yuna, so it is you. Why are you here? We rode the airship to the Calm Lands, then came to Bevel. Maester Kinnock summoned us then, ordered us to deal with the traitors. <sighs> you will fight us? The Temple's orders are law. Even if you are Lord Braska's flesh and blood, you're a traitor. His guardians, I don't see them. Maroda and Pase are not here. I will do this unhappy deed myself. Forgive me, Lady Yuna. Oh, 
Come on, Nisaru. You really have to do this? I mean, come on. Just because I tell you to go and do this doesn't mean you should go and do it. Okay, now, while he has his Aeons out, you cannot summon the same one. Unfortunately, you don't Aeons against mine. You don't really need to. In fact, let's go just pull out our cream of the crop here and wipe the floor with what he has. summon will overdrive on its first attack. So you're going to want to use a shield. That way it'll prevent you from just getting killed on the first attack. Now we can go ahead with beating the piss out of this thing. And we can overdrive. guy is sort of the boss of this gun. Just because we, we defeated one of his Aeons, we will summon another. Isaru is the boss of this dungeon. And that's a little bit weird because ordinarily you would think as a boss is someone who's like bad or trying to be evil or whatever. Isaru though is not a bad person. And he doesn't want to do what he's doing right now. But it just shows you the level of control that Yevon has over the population of Spirit. This is something that he doesn't want to do, but he feels like he has to do. So he's getting into it. I mean, and the same thing can be said about Waka, because we've seen Waka, his opinion of the Albed was such a negative thing, based entirely on the Spirit of Yevon has been teaching his entire life that once he found out that Riku wasn't out there, despite the fact that he was perfectly fine with her, the entire time up to there, his opinion of her changed at snap of fingers. He just completely changed. And that's the kind of hold that Yevon has in the evil spirit. See, I've summoned Bahamut again, even though it wasn't cured between the two fights. It's a strong enough Aeon that I can take out these two. Sonic Wings. That attack does do damage, but the primary reason why you do that is to delay the attacks of the thing you're fighting. Ooh, I brought it up to overdrive. Unfortunately, it didn't do enough damage to stop the hum. And now we're up to overdrive, so we can take it down. Let's end this fight.
he got stored for us now. God damn it. Okay, now that he's summoning Bahamut, we cannot do the same. This does not look like a fair fight. And Bahamut is usually incredibly stronger than Shiva, but eh, it's not going to be too hard because, well, uh, the way that Saru is going to fight with Bahamut is kind of stupid. See, what Bahamut is going to do is slowly charge its overdrive gauge, uh, fill about 20% of its overdrive gauge per turn. And at the end of all that, it'll unleash its overdrive. So all you have to do is attack Bahamut up until its overdrive gain is full, and then use a shield on your Aeon to absorb the damage. If he decided to fight proper, you'd probably get your ass kicked. See, three... Okay, we have a three. Now his overdrive is full at one, and our turn is next, so you shield. Elemental Aeon. Casting that attack magic on it will heal it. Like so. It wasn't really necessary, but I did it anyway. Okay, overdrive the ages full. I thought I could finish him off. I should have known, considering that I already played the game and I'm just watching what I've already done. I should have remembered. Away to the surface up ahead.
Your pilgrimage is over. Uh, Saru is done, and so is the episode.